All right, guys. So as promised, we're gonna continue the collab series um, today. Um, so what we're gonna do is work on the build up here. We're gonna get some snares, make our own build up, and and learn the just the process of doing it. Not, nothing, um, nothing crazy. Um, if you guys know how to do it, then awesome. But I'm gonna teach you guys a few methods to do it, and then how to make it sound clean. Okay, so let's find a snare. We're gonna go into the trans section. This time, uh, we're gonna go snare. Let's use uh, the Sennheiser trans drums. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a drum rack and I'm going to put it in there because I want to layer my snares um, to make it sound a little bit bigger. You know, let's try those and then we can add and take away snares as we go making build. I want to leave this open because remember we have that reverse verb. And I think it sounds very cool to have it build up to that and then it goes empty and then you have... It's kind of like a fake drop. People are like, oh shit, oh there it is. And I hate this thing moving around. Alright, so there we go. Okay. We start cutting it a bit more as it goes higher. One last cut. One last cut. Now, there's various ways of doing this because then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pitching the snares as they keep building, like towards the end, it's going to pitch up. So then the snares are rarely going to be heard, but you're still going to hear the. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Now, um, talk a little bit about the, the whole concept of the, of the drop. Um, a lot of Injuna Beat stuff, um, and that's just putting them into perspective. It doesn't mean we're going to make a track like them. Um, a lot of their stuff is, um, the first drop is a bass drop. It's not very melodic. Uh, the reason for that is, again, you can play this at clubs, um, and their music is really clubby. Like, you can play it at a club. It creates atmosphere. Um, so, um, it's not traditional to have like a, a bass that moves, doesn't move that. It's traditional to have a bass that doesn't move that much around. I mean, you could have it move around if you desire. Like the most I have is that G, G sharp movement that it's not even part of the scale, but it always gives it that dark kind of feeling to it. Now, I personally like that. Now the person asking for the hunger games, to construction of the track, um, that track doesn't have anything to do with progressive trance. I mean, it does have some trance influences. But I just made it to to what I thought was would sound good, so that was the whole idea of that one. Um, the break is too too long in my opinion. Whatever you know. So I'm gonna make the pitch up around. There we go. We're gonna have to do it when it starts getting really fast. That's when we want that pitch up. And 
And then we want to automate an EQ. Okay, we're going to do a, a low pass. We're going to move the lows. So that when it reaches there, um, that's when it starts. Kind of, you know, go away. All right, so now what we're missing are some uplifter effects going up. Uh, one of the things I'm gonna do is maybe um, I think I had I thought I had a pad. I was gonna get the pad and make the the riser with that. Um, so for the breakdown, we're gonna have a pad. So I'm gonna choose the pad. I think I know which pad I'm going with. Um, uh, I always use this Silent One Revolution Volume Two for almost everything. Um, yeah, you know. I made the sounds, why not? <laughs> gonna open the filter up though. Cool, and we're gonna do the our own um uplifter with the pad we're gonna be using. That's the way I'm gonna do it, just control shift M, drag, control shift M, opens up a MIDI. That's a shortcut. I love Ableton, fast workflow, G all the way. We're just gonna add a pitch bend like this. the delay and the reverb off it we're gonna apply an EQA to this so we're gonna have this filter in with the bass as well sounds more cleaner Now, for those of you guys who always need to hear if, if the drop sounds good when mastered, you can use Ozone as a, as a reference. Here's a preset I always use. forgot to name it. Um, and pretty much it gives you a good reference of how it's going to sound like. So that gives you kind of a good reference how it's going to sound like mastered and then you can use the maximizer and put it down more. Um, that's if you guys like to hear shit loud, which I recommend doing this instead of producing loud. Produce and then put that now and then maybe every 30 minutes to see how it sounds like if that's what you, how you produce. I shouldn't have called myself Semworld because I like making really dark stuff. Um, so <laughs> I should have called myself something else. Um, because I think Semworld is like the meaning of it is like you're in one state of mind and body. Um, and, you know, the idea of it is just like, what? <laughs> you're making dark stuff with that name, bro. Okay, um, going with this. Uplifter. I like the way it pans. It adds some uh, some more um, stereo effect. Need this one, and I just need a long one. Another um, go up here.
build up up to this takes 15 minutes yo now i just need a very long kind of white noise which i'm gonna use i have this white noise pack i'm just gonna use this <laughs> i have the 16 bar and an 8 bar up <laughs> let me just Now the snares do need a bit more work to make them sound a little bit bigger. Damn, damn. So we might do that next episode so we don't focus that much on that. Um, I'm going to make a new channel effects for... Um, viewer for the effects, um, which we are going to take from the base. The only difference is that we have the same parameters there. So what we're going to do is just increase the K time a bit and the size of it. Because we kind of want to have the same unifying reverb throughout the whole track. put this up here minutes so one of the things i am going to do is i'm going to move the claps to come in over here after four bars it can come in Okay, so we're going to keep moving this along. Tomorrow I'll make a new episode, um, and this time we're going to work on Melody. Um, so hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. Um, I know it's not the most popular one on SimWorld. A lot of people don't watch this one because Progressive Trance is still not as big as the other genres. But thanks for tuning in, guys, for those, for those of you guys who do watch it. Um, and just, you know, ask your questions, and I'll try and answer them. Um, so for those of you guys who asked, um, this sounds... Progressive chant sounds more melodic. It does sound melodic till the break. Um, the, the intro, what we're going to do is we're going to start filtering in like an ARP and in a pad that's playing the chords. And that's going to kind of start adding more melody to it. And we're slowly going to move into the break. We're just not going to have a huge buildup and then boom. And then the blocks. Dun, 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 because that's not progressive trans. That's a big room. Um, so we'll go from there, guys. Um, there's a few things to do in the way of you know structuring it so that it goes well into the break because a lot of progressive trance eases into the break it just doesn't build up to the break it eases into it so the energy starts coming down down till you have just your pad and maybe your arp depending on what you want to go with and then this is a type of anjuna stuff but if we're trying to make other stuff like you know um enhanced i think it has that kind of new sound where it's like very melodic uh but they still have that, that whole you know atmospheric break so we'll talk more about it as we get there about the theory behind it I am no ways a progressive trance expert. However, I have produced a lot of progressive trance tracks because I love trance 